Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello and welcome to Alaska Weather. For the Wednesday edition, I'm Kimberly Hefner and today is August 30th, 2017. Just heading out of the end of summer, we do have an active weather pattern in store for you. So in just a moment, we're gonna be covering your public aviation and marine forecasts. Now let's take a look first at the weather headlines. I'm gonna step off the screen so you can go ahead and read the, them um, for yourself. We, we're gonna be seeing rain continuing across the southern mainland, bring some more uh, rain in through Friday. And then we're gonna see snow and wind for the North Coast and Brooks Range. And the last headline is the gusty winds that are gonna be uh, across much of the coastal locations as well. Uh, on the bottom there, we have the new graphic style for the TV marine map forecast, and that is highlighted at the end of our show. So I'll explain those in just a few minutes, but for now, let's take a look at the concerns across the state. We do have um, here in yellow some wind advisories uh, near the Kobuk area on the east or the western side of the Brooks Range. We're looking at a gusty wind coming down through um, the channel terrain gusting up to 45 miles per hour. So that's gonna be out through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Then taking a look across the uh, strait here, the Bering Strait, we're seeing these areas highlighted for the high surf advisories. We're looking at the offshore seas around six to 10 feet. So be advised that's gonna continue until about 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon for your Thursday. Now looking at the weather systems that are bringing the rain and snow across the state, let's take a focus first at the one across the Gulf. This has got a spin uh, centered close to Kodiak Island as we headed to the latter part of the afternoon. You can see that curling up as it heads north towards the Kenai. And this is bringing another swath of moisture across the northern Gulf locations. We're looking at rain at the surface in just a moment. We're gonna take a look at your surface map, but you can see this large white plume that's heading towards um, inland areas. The whiter uh, areas are the colder cloud tops, but this is also indicative of a subtropical air mass that's being pulled up from the North, North Pacific. So just taking a look at that, pulling all the way up through the Brooks Range, this is what's bringing rain across much of the state there. Now on the backside of the system, uh, the darker cloud tops are slightly warmer, but this is the cooler air mass that's being pulled down um, along the backside of that low pressure system. So pushing this into motion, you can see uh, the northerly flow across the much of the bearing as a ridge is parked out um, just along the western waters there. So just take another look at this again. We have two uh, systems to keep an eye on right now, a broad trough across much of the mainland with high pressure out to the west, and here's what it looks like at the surface. The surface is a 982 millibar low just located over Kodiak Island. A warm front has pulled up into the central interior with rain showers mainly across the southern tier of the state, heavier rain moving up to the northern Gulf Coast this afternoon. And then we've seen uh, some colder temperatures across the Brooks Range bring some light snow into the area. We'll, we're even seeing up to an inch of snow for the um, latter part of today accumulating and then melting for the eastern Beaufort Seacoast. Now we are seeing some higher snow accumulations which are expected into tonight. 2,000 feet or greater the locations along the mountains will see between two to four inches as we head into your day on Thursday. On the back side of the system, we do have light showers just along the weak disturbances moving across the back side of the low pressure system and patchy fog along the areas to the west uh, in the bearing as the ridge is parked out near Shimia. Now we also have this coastal influence ridge across the southeast 
up into the northeast Gulf Coast location, and this is causing some very gusty winds. Uh, during the afternoon hours, we saw them gusting between 25 to 35 miles per hour, and also um, a notable wind speed across the backside of the low pressure system. During this time of the year, we're always seeing these gradient squeezes between the weather systems, so with the ridge out to the west, and the low pressure uh, sitting right here over Kodiak, we're getting this squeeze right along the west coast, and that's bringing wind speeds between 25 to 35 miles per hour, slightly stronger gusts up to 50 miles per hour along the channel terrain of the Alaska Peninsula. Looking at your forecast for tonight, we're gonna see a continued um, gustier flow, not as gusty as this cold front pushes through during uh, the early evening hours tonight, and that's uh, causing the greater forcing that we saw this afternoon. So winds will be in general between 20 to 40 miles per hour. Now this low pressure system here is gonna keep the tighter gradient across the coast. So they're actually gonna see some stronger wind gusts uh, during the overnight hours. Uh, uh, east flow is gonna be strong between 20 to 40 miles per hour possible gusts up to 50 miles per hour. We're also going to have uh, isolated thunderstorms occurring ahead of the low pressure system. A Little bit of energy associated with this upper level system that's moving across is gonna bring some isolated thunderstorm chances all the way into the southern part of the panhandle uh, as we head through the late night hours. Across the north, not much change there, just a very strong easterly flow between 20 to 35 miles per hour from the eastern boat for sea coast, and then a little bit stronger on the backside of the system up to 45 miles per hour near Kobuk. Now, we, we are seeing some light rain showers. The air mass is slightly warmer out to the northwest there, so mostly rain across the northwest coast. Now for Thursday, you see this cold front. It's not moving very quickly, but keeping that gradient tight across the eastern areas of the Alaska Peninsula as it pushes further to the east. And then this ridge across the coast is gonna be strong in the morning, but it should slacken during the afternoon hours. And generally, we're gonna see wind speeds across much of the state slacken off, and we'll see that uh, wind advisory expiring during the morning. And the winds across the northeast are gonna probably be holding the strongest, along with some gusty southerly flow as the gradient squeezes along the southeast and the panhandle. Expect rain showers to be heavy um, at times for the southeast for Thursday, with the heaviest amounts expected along the south east areas towards the Dixon entrance. And then we did see uh, breaks in the sun today, so um, very far to the south there, Ketchikan got up to 65 degrees. So they did see some warming trends, but in general, it's been fairly moderate across the state in the 50s and 60s, with the cool, colder temperatures staying to the north and slightly cooler on the backside as this cold air has moved around this low pressure system that becomes centered on Thursday. But notice it is weakening down to a 996 millibar low by Thursday. And then on the latter part of the day, this ridge across the west is going to break down. A little weak surface low is going to be skirting the uh, just the western areas of the Aleutians. And that's going to become important on Friday because there's going to definitely be a change. We're going to have this cold polar air mass coming down and wrapping into a subtropical air mass, which is going to produce a low that forms around the center of the bearing. And this is gonna be bring some gustier winds, change of direction there, more out of the south direction. So the western areas of the state are gonna see a break between the two systems. So on, on Friday, the lighter wind speeds all across the west coast and drier definitely, especially with a, with a south to southeasterly flow across much of south central, we'll see a lot of downsloping. So a few showers um, just generated by a broad low pressure system across the state. However, that low pressure in the center of the state is gonna be pushing off there to the east. And this is gonna continue some showers, you know, like I said, statewide, but there's gonna be very little impact for your Friday. So we get through the large weather system that's moving through tonight and tomorrow, and then we get a quieter day on Friday with that next low pressure system starting to strengthen and move very quickly late Friday night into Saturday. We'll see the progression of that. We'll take a look at that in more detail tomorrow, but for now, let's take a look at the temperatures across the state. We're looking at 50s and 60s for the southeast locations. Like I said, 65 at Ketchikan, 
before they cooled off with rain this afternoon. And then across South Central, most areas were in the lower 60s by the afternoon hours. Elmendorf also came in at 65 degrees this afternoon. Looking to the north and central areas, primarily in the upper 30s to mid 40s, with the coolest temperatures across the eastern Brooks Range in the mid 30s. Got very cold overnight there. Temperatures were just below freezing across the central Brooks Range. Across the west coast, temperatures barely climbed into the lower 40s with that cold air mass seeping in into the southwestern region. Temperatures there were only in the upper 40s to lower 50s across all of the Aleutians. Expect temperatures tonight to remain on the cooler side across the northern and western tier of the state in the mid 30s for most locations. Slightly warmer across the west coast in the lower 40s and in the mid 40s for the Bering waters and the islands out in that direction. Now across the southern tier of the state, we'll see a few um, colder temperatures for the central regions in the upper 30s, but generally going to be a uh, mild night with temperatures in the mid 40s, staying under a cloud cover. That kind of helps us from getting too cool. And then across the southeast, temperatures are going to be in the lower 50s. For tomorrow's highs, we're expecting warmest temperatures ar across a thermal ridge that develops for the central areas in the lower 60s to mid 60s. The southeast will stay cooler in the rain in the mid 50s and as well as across much of the Gulf waters. Uh, the cooler air will keep things on the cooler side as we head through the next several days. Across the north, maybe slightly warmer in the upper 30s primarily to near 40. And then the southwest will see another day in the upper 40s to near 50 degrees. The Aleutians uh, we're expecting to climb into the mid 50s. Let's take a look at your flying weather now. Your conditions across the state are going to be most hazardous for the Brooks Range and north as that cold core system is up there and bring the gusty winds will combine with these IFR conditions and make flying very difficult across the northern tier of the state. Looking for widespread MVFR conditions across much of the state, excluding the um, central interior zones. And we'll also see IFR conditions across the southeast with low pressure system moving in through tomorrow morning. However, the conditions will improve to mostly MVFR. It's up for Chilkoot and White Passes up there, gonna stay down to IFR along the northern tier of the state, mainly MVFR with that IFR across the central Brooks Range. Snow reducing visibilities there to the north. And then across the Bering, we're gonna see MVFR conditions as well as IFR moving into the uh, Shimia area for the afternoon. Looking at your passes in more depth, we have Anatovic and Adigan Pass. Both are gonna stay IFR all day. And then Lake Clark and Merrill Pass will be MVFR and VFR for rainy as well. Looking at windy, seeing MVFR conditions improve to VFR late day, and Isabel will also improve to VFR. We'll see Mentastigo MVFR to VFR, and also Tinita, uh, that around um, just north of the, of, of the Chugach range there, it's gonna stay in the MVFR condition and then portage along Prince William Sound will be MVFR. Chilkoot and White Pass, IFR for most of the day. They might see some MVFR breaks, but primarily IFR conditions. Now the freezing levels for tomorrow morning, we're gonna see that surface freezing level uh, across the north with a slow climb from 2,000 to 4,000 across the western areas of the state. And we'll see six to 8,000 feet across the, um, down towards the southeast. And now for the western areas of the Bering, that climb is gonna stay between four to 6,000 feet, warming slightly towards um, Shimia to the west. Now your icing will be um, a concern between four to 6,000 feet across the central areas of the Bering, down towards the eastern Aleutians there. And then across the state, uh, should be advised that across the Brooks Range is gonna be a situation between two to 6,000 feet as you head to the south there, and some widespread conditions along the western areas of the state. Expect these conditions to the south between four to 8,000 feet. Looking at your jet stream for tomorrow, uh, it's gonna, this is a stack system, so very similar from top to bottom, troughing across the uh, eastern bearing there with a 160 knot jet stream out towards the western Aleutians. And your 9,000 foot winds are around low pressure across the western areas of the state, stronger southerly flow out ahead of the system between 25 to 40 knots. 
and northerly flow on the backside of the system between 20 to 35 knots. Looking at the similar conditions for the 3,000 foot level with the strongest winds on the backside and the base of the system between 25 to 35 knots. And remember, tomorrow morning we're going to see that jet being out of more of a southeast direction there between 25 to 40 knots during the morning hours. We'll see a stronger jet out ahead of the system also 40 knots coming into the southeast. Now to sum up your turbulence across the area, we're gonna be looking at below 6,000 feet and probably stretching out a little bit further to the east there. Uh, but primary concern is gonna be across that nor northern gulf. Also um, be concerned for the north and western areas of the state below 6,000 feet extending all the way through the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, primary concerns across the eastern waters there and the western uh, areas will be under the ridge uh, in just a moment, we're going to be back and explain the marine forecast and a recap of the forecast summary. The Valdez Fly-In started out probably back in the 80s. It became this mecca of uh, short field takeoff and landing, bush flying, you know, where everybody meets. All the cowboys show up, <laughs> you know, everybody shows up with their horse, you know. safety briefing for the sole competition. If you have not done it somewhere else, do not do it here first. This is not the time to try the new technique. This competition uh, prepares pilots for landing off airport. Whenever you're looking for a place to land, you have to be absolutely certain about that spot. You have to be able to touch down at that spot or a little bit later and never before it. Well, being able to get down exactly where you want and stop as quickly as you can, uh, one is really fun in competition, but two is excellent training for flying super fast. There's a lot to it that separates some of these guys from just your normal flying around the you know, United States types of pilot. I guess that's why they come and seek me out a little bit. I've been flight instructor for about 20 years now. Like any kid, whatever his dad does, you probably don't want to do it, you know, but uh, it's the only thing I ever knew. When, you, when you're hanging around a bunch of pilots, we have a lot of pride, you know, we talk about, well, I've been flying this airplane for the last 5,000 hours, you know, and I've been in this airplane for 2,000 hours, and, you know, I learned to fly when I was 16. I've been flying since uh, I was about two weeks old. I've been flying since the headset would fit over my little baby head. I started flying with my father when I was eight years old. So I asked my dad one day, I'm like, hey, when, when was the first time I was in an airplane? And my dad looks at me and he says, son, you were conceived in an airplane. <laughs> this will be my sixth year at the Valdez Fly-In, and I've won first place in four of the five years. We have the T3 tailwheel suspension. You can find that at supercupsnorth.com. In the front here, we have the leading edge slats. They help uh, the air stay attached to the wing and help it fly at a high angle of attack. We have a 240 horsepower motor. It cruises around 85 miles an hour, but it climbs out at, uh, you know, better than anything I've ever flown in. Most of the guys that I compete with at Valdez at the Stoll competition are seasoned bush pilots that have been around the block for a long, long time. They've seen way more than I'll ever see in my life. So they, they all, give me a hard time about uh, having won in the past, and I just hope that I don't run out of luck here. Because these guys, they are certainly really good, and, and I don't doubt that they'll uh, come back and get me one day. All right, you need to do it within 194 feet. You landed. 55, 55 feet eight inches. Let's give them a wave. I've been flying in Valdez at a competition for about the last 10 years, and it's been great fun but nothing has ever come close to the uh, amount of pride and fun that I had today getting to compete with my daughter in this event. I've been coming here with my dad since I was probably an infant, and this year he finally convinced me to compete too. Laura J. Erb, 
Her first landing distance was 209 feet, so let's see if she can beat her first landing distance. And yes, that will qualify. All right, Wes, uh, proud, proud dad. Now, let's see, her, her second landing was 162. Your best landing was, if I remember right, 152? It, it, that's close, but uh, I, we have to check the numbers. I think she might have beat me this year. <laughs> Getting in a Super Cub for the first time is like strapping on a set of wings and see everything from a bird's perspective and then touch down and get out and suddenly you're 100 miles from where you last were or maybe even in a place that nobody's ever been before and it's just an unreal experience. Flying up in Alaska is a lot different than flying the lower 48 because the weather changes so rapidly, the terrain is much more varied. Having the opportunity to be a pilot in Alaska has you know, really defined who I am as a pilot and who I am as a person. Hello, welcome back to the show and the marine forecast. We're going to start out with looking at today's sea ice edge. Today uh, doesn't look much different from yesterday, and this is actually the updated map from earlier this afternoon. And basically, we're going to see continued melting. Looking at your southeast forecast, we do have our new marine maps up here today, and we're looking at the winds. Uh, the arrows are the wind barbs. Actually, the longer they are, the higher speeds they are. And taking a look at the colors, these are the sea height, um, as indicated on the top part of your screen there. You can look at the scale, it goes from zero to 55. Hopefully we don't see the high end of the scale too soon. Right now we're in the small craft range of winds between 25 to 30 knots across much of the area. A little bit lighter wind speeds up there towards Yakutat, all out of the south direction for your Thursday. And looking at seas in your inner channels between five to six feet and the outer waters will be between 10 to 11 feet. For your Friday, expect a lighter wind speed with the directional shifts more out of the southwest for the outer waters and more of a southeasterly flow across the inner channels. All at 15 knots under small crafts between 3 to 8 feet for your sea heights. The highest sea heights are, of course, in the outer waters. Looking at the um, forecast for the northern and western Gulf waters, looking at 20 to 25 knots. So uh, small crafts up there to the north and for Prince William Sound, especially uh, gusty in the morning or up to 35 knots possibly. And then we'll see sea heights on this day between four to 10 feet, highest seas there in the northeastern Gulf waters. And then the Cook Inlet is gonna primarily see a nor northeasterly flow becoming southwesterly at the southern end of the Cook Inlet towards the Amatui Islands there. Uh, we're looking at a lighter speed though across those those areas with sea heights between four to eight feet across the Cook Inlet and across uh, towards Shelikoff Strait. We'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, looking at the Friday forecast, we're seeing primarily a southerly direction across the entire area with um, winds between 10 to 20 knots for your Friday. So lighter wind speeds and seas are gonna be between four to eight feet. Looking at your forecast for the Shelikoff Strait, Kodiak Island, and the Alaska Peninsula, looking at primarily a west to northwesterly flow across these areas with seas between seven to eight feet. And you can see there's a little bit higher seas there north of the Alaska Peninsula. Looking at your Friday, a little bit of a directional shift and lighter speeds between 15 to 25 knots there, just south of Kodiak Island, the highest speed, small craft advisory. And then we'll see seas between four to eight feet, highest on the Pacific side. Your Aleutian forecast for Thursday, looking at um, from west to east, lighter speeds speeds to the west and we'll see 15 to 20 knots uh, stepping over here to the side so you can shimmy, see shimmy out of the southwest direction there and seas on this day are primarily going to be between four to eight feet with the highest seas 
just um, across the eastern Aleutians there. And on your Friday, expect directional shifts and stronger winds out there in the central Aleutians at 25 knots out of the southwesterly direction. All across the area, seas on this day are going to be between 4 to 6 feet. Now, your west forecast is going to be for Thursday, a stronger wind with small craft advisories along the west coast, 25 knots there with seas between 4 to 6 feet. A um, little bit lighter wind speeds change of direction there for the Pribilof Islands, becoming southwesterly for the Pribilofs and south of Nunavak Island on Friday. Lighter wind speeds on your Friday with seas between 2 to 4 feet. So not too bad on Friday. Uh, looking at a stronger wind speed across the north and northwest coast, all small craft advisory between uh, the seas are going to be between 4 to 10 feet. So look out um, for that surf advisory for tomorrow across the Bering Strait locations. And for your Friday forecast, lighter wind speeds, uh, as, as I mentioned before, with an east flow becoming more northeast to northwest towards the Kotzebue Sound and the Bering Strait. Seas on that day are going to be between 4 to 6 feet. Let's recap your forecast. Uh, the main system to look at tonight is the low pressure system that's going to be squeezing the gradient for the northern gulf. We'll also have those isolated thunderstorms across the eastern waters and the panhandle, looking at heavier rain from uh, all across the southeast up towards the northeast gulf coast. Light showers across inland areas with snow amounts between two to four inches across higher elevations of the Brooks Range, up to an inch across the northeastern Beaufort Sea Coast. We'll see strong gusty winds across the west coast with the near Kobuk uh, and the western areas of the Brooks Range gusting up to 45 miles per hour through 7 a.m. tomorrow. A cold front moving some speedy conditions across the Alaska Peninsula between 25 to 35 miles per hour. Lighter conditions out there towards the west, however, patchy fog for the western waters. And then we'll see this low weakening on your Thursday, less showers with the most rain predicted tomorrow for your southeast locations up to the northeast coast. Lighter wind speeds on Thursday will be even lighter on Friday. So looking at a light showery pattern with low pressure weakening across the state with the next storm system to watch across the western areas of the Bering moving in for the weekend. Thanks for staying with us. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.